Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of my Grand Exchange Only account. Now the rules for this account are very simple. Now simply I'll be taking a brand new account, going to the Grand Exchange area, and I'm never going to leave. The only other rules are I can't trade other players or pick up other items off the ground that other players have dropped. I'll be confining myself there until I finally reach 1000 total level. Now this is going to force me to try out every single training method and money making method that there is out there as I'll be very limited in what I can train to get those 1000 total levels. As always, if you are enjoying the series, don't forget to leave the video a like, it always helps out a lot with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much, and let's get started. Now I have been putting a really big focus on fletching so far in the series and there's a reason why. Once you get up to the higher levels there are really good money making methods and trading methods that become available. Now we just hit level 81 fletching and that is kind of important because now with a plus 4 boost we can do two different things that are really good money and good training. We can make magic longbows which is going to be our best training method I think all the way to 99. But additionally, we can now add bolt tips to dragon bolts, which is a lesser known way to make money with fletching. Now it's a pretty simple method. All we have to do is buy dragon bolts and a certain type of bolt tip. From a quick calculation, I have determined that making diamond dragon bolts is the most profitable right now. Well, actually making onyx dragon bolts is, but who's got the money for that? Maybe at some point we'll be able to do that. Right now the margin per bolt is actually about 50 or 60 GP, which is a massive profit compared to pretty much any other training method I have available. Okay, so there we go, we ended up buying 10,000 Dragon Bolts at just over 700 GP. Now tipping bolts is a little bit different than making darts, you don't spam click them together. Thank god, I don't know if I can handle more of that. Essentially you make them in batches of 10, and then you have to go click again. So we're going to run over here to the northwestern corner. The reason I'm going here is just because it adds another chance of me getting a random event, uh, which is something I'm looking for anyway. So normally I can't make them, but with a plus 4 boost, no problem, we'll start tipping them together. Now I'm guesstimating right now that the GP per hour from doing this is going to be about 1.5 mil per hour, maybe a little bit less. And additionally, we're going to get around 200k fletching experience, so across the board just an amazing training method. The only drawback is I'm going to burn through these 10,000 bolts in probably about 20 minutes, and I can only buy 11,000 every 4 hours, so that is the main bottleneck. Okay, so I ended up getting 180k per hour, you can do better, but I wasn't fully paying attention, and I had to eat these pies, which is kind of annoying. But yeah, if I could do this all the way to 99, I totally would, but we don't really have enough money right now to stockpile these items. Okay, we're going to go ahead and price check this again. Right now we can sell the Diamond Dragon Bolts for around 925 GP, which is awesome. Now I guess the only thing I don't really know about is how in demand uh, Diamond Dragon Bolts are, but I guess we'll find out. We're kind of committed now. Okay, well the answer is they are very in demand because that only took around an hour to sell those off and we ended up getting a 560k profit, which is amazing because that took me about 20 minutes, which means if I did that for an hour, I would have gotten around 1.7 mil per hour doing a fletching method that is actually a good training method as well. Now it is pretty challenging to do this constantly, but you know what? Doing it is kind of like a daily moneymaker I think is going to be great for my account. So whenever I get a chance, I'll buy 10,000 diamond bolt tips and dragon bolts, combine them together and get a ton of money. Okay, there's another lot of 10,000 already done. We are pretty much at another fletching level as well. We're already almost up to 82 fletching. Okay, I think they've dropped in value a bit down to 913, but that should still be about a 46 GP profit per bolt, which is still really good. Now the great thing about tipping those dragon bolts is I'm so focused on making money that I don't even realize I'm about to get a fletching level which we now have 82 fletching. On its own doesn't really give us much although we could make amethyst arrows but each level does really help out a lot because we're still using the dragon fruit pies to boost. 
which is kind of annoying. There was another 10,000 Diamond Dragon Bolt tips sold off for a 460k profit. Still absolutely massive. It only took me 15, 20 minutes to do that. So that's still up to 1.5 mil per hour, which is really helping to pad our cash stack. We're already up to 11.7 mil. Growing day after day, even though we are spending a bit of money here and there. So there's another 9,600 Diamond Dragon Bolts sold. Actually, our margin here was even better, which means our total profit was 490k. Well, I've been doing so many of these Dragon Bolts that I even have another fletching level coming in here. 83 fletching, that is awesome. Only two more levels to go until we've unlocked probably the method we're going to do all the way to 99, which is, of course, the Magic Longbow. Now keep in mind, we do have to wait four hours every time we want to do the bolt tip method, so we got to do something in the meantime. So one thing we're definitely going to have to do a lot of to get to 1000 total is combat training. There are just so many total levels locked behind ranged, hit points, defense, attack, and strength. Now assuming everything else goes to plan, I shouldn't have to get more than around 40 in each skill. Anything past 50 is going to be kind of ridiculous as I really cap out around 5k per hour. Now to help speed things up, we are going to be using potions. I mean, <laughs> seems kind of ridiculous, but we're going to be drinking energy potions because sometimes those imps just teleport around and I'm chasing them everywhere like an idiot. So, well, we might as well run while we do it. Okay, so we're just about to hit another strength milestone level. That is going to be level 20 strength. And we just locked in a blazing quick speed of 4,000 experience per hour. I'm on a complete tear right now. I'm finding imps left and right. So yeah, 4,000 experience per hour is definitely on the upper end. So at this point, we're definitely going to go with attack until we get the Mithril Scimitar. Maybe that will help out a bit. Okay, there's level 21 attack. That took another hour-ish to get that. Experience rate was not looking so hot, but at least we can now wear the Mithril Scimitar, which should add in another max hit, which is going to be pretty nice. Okay, there's another milestone, 20 hit points. That is awesome. Hit points is just kind of like free total levels. We're already up to 539 total level. By the end of all this combat training, I think we might actually hit 50 hit points, perhaps. Hey, there's another random event. That is awesome. Uh, not the one I'm looking for exactly, but you know what? We'll still do it. We are really looking for one random event in particular, and that is the Bob the Cat random. Now the Evil Bob random event is by far the best one I could get on this account because there is a chance that you get fishing experience. As you all would imagine, there's no way for me to train fishing at the Grand Exchange, but if I complete this random event, there is a chance that he will reward 650 experience in the fishing skill. If I get that random event once, that is enough to get me to level 7. If I get it twice, I'll get to level 10. And three times will bring me to level 13. Now, unfortunately, I have made one irreversible mistake when it comes to this random event, and that is that I've already leveled my magic up to above level 51. Now, the way the random event works is to prevent it from ruining pure accounts. If you have 51 magic or less, it will only ever award the fishing experience. However, once you get above level 51, it also has the chance of awarding 650 magic experience, which is pretty much completely useless. So at the end of the day, whenever I get an Evil Bob Island event, I have a 1 in 2 chance of getting the experience. Hopefully, though, we can get one soon. Well, uh, we got some mine pieces. That's kind of cool. I guess I could start a collection or something, but, well, we got those. Well, that took quite a while, but there we go. That is level 25 strength. Been working on that for about 4 hours now. Now, in this very unique circumstance, I'm actually probably going to prioritize attack. Now someone can correct me if I'm wrong, but once I have the maximum hit necessary to one-shot the imp, is there any benefit to prioritizing strength after that? It seems like attack might actually be the way to go, because at least at that point I'll be more accurate. Speaking of attack, there is another milestone level 25 attack. Definitely a pretty slow process just hopping through the worlds here. Three to four thousand experience per hour it hasn't really gone up much unfortunately. That's probably where I'm going to stop for now, though. We're up to 551 total level. So now that we have gotten into the mid 80s for fletching, we can start making magic longbows. Not the quickest fletching method in the game, but the quickest fletching method that is also profitable for the most part. But more so than anything, the best part of this is that it is consistent. It's always going to be profitable. Currently, we still have to boost for it, but I think we're going to solve that right now.
Okay, so we have finally reached level 85 fletching and in the process made up another mill just from doing the diamond dragon bolts. So now I want to tackle a skill I've kind of been avoiding pretty much this entire time and that is prayer. Now prayer when you don't have a gilded altar is ridiculously expensive. The GP to XP goes up tremendously and I'm pretty sure even doing big bones is above 10 GP to XP. Like it's it's really expensive. That said, big bones are the absolute cheapest and most economical option for me to go with. Uh, so we're going to do that for now. Maybe someday if we get terribly rich, I could move up to something else. Oh, well, apparently we can't buy 5,000 at once. Uh, we're going to do 3,000, I suppose. And unfortunately, there's no way around this. We just have to bury the bones in the ground at the Grand Exchange. So we're going to start with 3,000 big bones. We're going to see where that gets us. Now this should take us under an hour and it's already going to be a 600k investment. So you can imagine if we did dragon bones, we'd be burning money. Well there we go, at least it got us to level 20. That's already 19 extra total levels that we didn't have before. There is level 30 prayer and we now have access to a couple different prayers I could use I suppose. For combat against imps, I don't know. Okay, so we are pretty much done with all 3,000 big bones, and that is going to get us to level 41 prayer, which I think was a pretty good investment, even if the GP to XP is very expensive. That brings us up to 595 total levels, so already a pretty big chunk done with. Okay, there we go, guys. There's level 25 hit points. Uh, another really awesome bit of total levels we gained for pretty much free. Hit points doesn't ever really specifically need to be trained. Oh my goodness, after a long last, we are about to hit a really important attack level, 31 attack. That took a long time, just to gain 5,000 experience took me an hour and a half. But finally we can now unlock another piece of gear. We're going to lock in here the Adamant Scimitar, which is going to be a pretty sizable upgrade over this measly Mithril Scimitar. I'm not sure if that's going to affect my XP per hour much though. Okay, we're just taking a quick break from combat training because we're pretty close to a fletching level. There is 86 fletching. Whenever I want to AFK, we do some fletching and there's another level. And I'm going through the bank here trying to clean it up a bit and I just noticed that we have around 700 casts of the superheat spell. I think I forgot to use those earlier, so we're going to go ahead and finish the rest of those. Well, there's level 57 magic. Uh, we've long blasted past that level 51 magic where I should have stopped. At least until I got the Evil Bob random event. No way to fix that now, we're just going to continue on training magic, getting more total levels. Okay, so from the 800 odd casts I had in the bank, that got me to level 31 smithing, which means we can now superheat steel. Uh, the only problem is that it's going to be a little more click intensive because you have to withdraw both iron and coal. Uh, I'm going to do a little testing later probably to see which one's better. But I do think iron is one of the more cost effective options. Granted, it is pretty slow. Now without ever leaving the Grand Exchange, there is one skill that I don't think many people would expect you could train, yet you can. It's using a really interesting method, an old method really, and I'm sure a lot of you have already guessed what it is. Now it is possible to train your agility skill without leaving the Grand Exchange just by picking up wound toy mices. Don't get too excited though because it is a very slow method. Fun fact, back in the day this actually used to be one of the most broken agility training methods until they patched it out. And it's very simple, granted going to be very click intensive and kind of annoying in such a big area such as the Grand Exchange. Essentially all we're going to do is wind up a toy mice, drop it onto the ground, pick it back up again for like 2 XP or 3 XP, it's not that much. Now the other drawback is other people can pick up this item so I can get trolled pretty easily. I swear to god if even one of my toy mice gets stolen, this is going to become a Minecraft channel, no more runescape. Okay, so we've wound up the mice, you release them onto the ground, I think we can do up to 5 maybe? Yeah, it caps it at 5, and then we just have to pick them up again. Oh man. Okay, so this is kind of, oh god. <laughs> the problem is that they kind of go everywhere, I, okay, I don't think I'm actually going to drop all 5 at once, that seems kind of ridiculous. Okay, so we are getting 3 XP per drop, which is kind of minimal, I would say. But unfortunately, this is the only training method we have, so we gotta do it.
Anyway guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I really hope you enjoyed it. Today we managed to get all the way up to 619 total levels, so another big chunk of total levels out of the way. I think we have solidly entered the mid game now for this account, and I am extremely excited to see where it goes. On top of that, we're finishing the episode at around 15 million GP. We earned a fair bit, but we also spent a bit as well, but our cash stack is still growing. Now before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to Revolver Ocelot, Kush Patel, Tizdok Bunny, and Brad Sings for subscribing and my Dragon tier of YouTube membership. Can't believe you guys did that. Thank you so much, guys. It means a lot. Also, a massive shout out to Double Talk, Heathen OSRS, Base Titch, and Luke Kaiser. Thank you guys again. If any of you guys are looking for an additional way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. You can become immortalized in my videos, get access to a video release schedule, as well as get a custom Discord role. Anyway guys, thanks again, and I'll see you next time.